Hi, I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design, and uh, welcome to episode two of our series looking at race car sketch modelling. Uh, in this second episode, we're going to be getting into a bit more detail, looking at refining the overall forms and volumes uh, that we've already established. Um, so without further ado, on with the episode. Thank you. So in this next phase of the modelling, we're looking at the uh, side. We're creating the cutout um, in the bodywork. You know, it's not a big solid surface there. We want it to be cut out and swept back. So we're projecting the curves on so that we can trim back the main surfaces. And then once we've got that, we can start to rail in this lower edge and changing the values from being uh, natural to parallel on that corner so it doesn't twist and tighten as much as, as it could. Uh, and then we're running a fillet down the edge just to soften it again, come away from this hard theoretical, uh, getting everything sort of grouped and tidied, but so that we can see what's going on with the general form. And yeah, generally at this stage, it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the character is doing kind of what I want it to do, but we need to get into more of this sort of uh, windscreen area and the, the overhead sort of roof area. So again, running some fillets around there so that we can start to see the intended character. Projecting uh, curves onto surfaces, so that again we're starting to understand what that split line will look like as it runs around the uh, shoulder line into the rear. So now we're into the front, we're looking at the front end development a little bit more, and I wanted to chop that centre bonnet region so that I had uh, a central area immediately at the base of the screen that would sort of be a, a, a high pressure area for an intake uh, that would be feeding the cockpit. So we're dropping the centre region of the bonnet and then basically sort of skinning between uh, those two regions to start to create the sort of V-channel that's going to run into, into our design and give us that sort of cockpit. Playing around with the CVs of that drop surface to just sort of flatten things off, get the character looking a bit more tidy, a bit more purposeful, uh, give that transition. Uh, yeah, you can see there the intake, um, give it a bit more character. And then, then we're looking at the nose. We're starting to chop that back. We're setting the curves up that will allow us to uh, trim back the side view. But at the same time, we're also using a similar curve network to introduce uh, the lower sort of front splitter surface, if you like. So we're using the curves that we've taken off the lower edge to give us something we can trim and project on there. And now we're into sort of side view projection to trim out that nose. We're creating a sort of an aerofoil section that we're then adjusting the CVs of to give us something that sort of lines up and flows in from the upper bodywork line. And generally the character at this point is kind of doing what we want, so I can thicken up that front splitter just by using a basic draft tool. And generally the character this is now, yeah, doing what we want it to do. So yes, in this next phase of the model, we're um, starting to see a little bit more of the detail on the front end. We're getting the basic headlight shape in there as a first pass. I got half an idea with this as to what I wanted to do. But in reality, I wanted to play around with it in 3D and explore some options. So let's get something in. And again, without over laboring it, we move to the back end of the vehicle. And again, we're looking at the relationship with the under tray. We start to get surfaces in there that will link up the rear bodywork to the under tray. And as I said before, you know, it's a case of not doing too much on the model at any one point. It's a case of working your way around it, pulling it all up to the same level and be happy with the overall direction and the overall volume and the overall characters before we yeah, apply the next level of detail. So now we put a bit of an edge in on, on that rear panel to just give it a bit of material thickness and a bit of character there. Generally that edge is doing kind of what we want it to do. So we'll be grouping surfaces and making things join up as comp what will eventually be components. Uh, looking at that top corner, getting a freeform blend in there to join things up, keeping things tidy. And then running a little bit of an edge fillet along that edge. Again, using cordal fillet, but keeping it as small runs that I can manage and check over. And then the final detail is to just give that top edge as it runs up into the cockpit region, a little bit of a trim on its lower edge so that it tapers, give us a clean, tidy look. So now we're starting to concern ourselves with the split lines that are going to run up and over to define the top of the door region and the split line that runs down the A-pillar. So again, we're just using basic curves, curves on surfaces projecting on uh, to understand what that curve run's going to be. And then once we've got the curves something like, we've applied fillets on the ends where we want them to be, uh, we'll start to use the tubular offset tool to create a groove uh, that will follow the path of that curve on surface and give us a sort of a, a recessed channel um, which we can colour code a dark colour if we want to 
that will stand out and give us a bit of an edge break on, on that surface and make things look just a little bit more realistic. Um, so just working through with the tubular offset tool, trimming surfaces back to give us uh, the character of that split that's really sort of linking the front and the rear of the vehicle up and helping to inform where, where the doors will be, where the window breaks are. And now, now that we've got that in place, we can come back to that black graphic uh, and subdivide the surface based on the curve on surface we previously used so that we've got uh, a black region and a silver region, which is yeah, very much part of the design of the character on that sort of top rear three quarters. So in this next section of the modelling, we're looking at the uh, louvers. We're putting a surface in there that's basically achieved by using a degree five surface to give us lines that we project on. Uh, and then we're using the curve on surfaces of those lines in conjunction with the draft tool to create a series of slats, which we can then add a little bit of draft to the edge of to give it a little bit of thickness. Uh, and working our way through on each one, we can extend those through, trim them back based on that where that edge comes to and then use um, material thickness sort of offset and put a little bit of a fillet down that edge just to give it a bit of character so that in 3D when you render it, uh, it's got a bit more interest about it. So that will do for the, uh, the louvers. And for the next job, we're looking again at the headlights. It's typical of most designers. You're never quite happy with what you come up with straight away and then you want it to do a bit more on it. In the first instance, I was thinking that the headlight would maybe ought to wrap over the fillet part way. So I, I subdivided that fillet um, midpoint, uh, treat it as a set of curves on surfaces, which I could then fill it and start trim back so that we get this sensation of the black area of the headlight potentially sort of wrapping around the edge into the, into the, sort of the shoulder line of the orange a little bit. And we can then sort of compare how that looks compared to what we had originally and see if that's given us more of the character that we want but in my heart of hearts I know I'm still not there uh, like every designer I'm going to want to come back to that and play around with it a bit more um, but then the next job for me is to add a little bit of a feature to the this sort of lower front chin edge I wanted to create sort of a bit of an undercut a bit of a sort of chisel chamfer that sort of points up into the sort of body side line so I've trimmed surfaces back there and I'm using my fillet tool to um, uh, apply and project an additional uh, surface in there we're using skin to just give us that hint of a surface direction change which I'm, I'm liking the look of but it's got a, a little bit of fullness there's things about it that I'll want to rework I want to straighten that edge up rebuild it using freeform blend uh, but it's it's getting close it's giving us a character that's linking the front up to the sides and, and making the thing sort of flow more in a three-quarter view maybe it can afford to be a little bit deeper we'll take that surface in a little bit more that's in my mind getting closer to the kind of character I had in my head. Uh, it's looking fairly purposeful. But like every designer, I, yeah, you come back to the headlights, you, you wonder in, in Photoshop or any other sketch package if, if there's a different route, something that's a bit more modern, a bit more striking, perhaps the sort of a sort of daytime running light shape that's really quite distinctive. Something that's got a, a bit more character about it. Once you've got that up and running as a 2D sketch you're fairly happy with, it's easy enough to take out another layer, um, copy the geometry across that you had, start projecting some curves on, start to see the character of it, trim things back, get to the point where you know, you're really understanding variants, you, you're building one variant of the design, you're comparing it with another. And that, that's the way design's quite often reviewed, it's all in, in context of where were we, where could we be. Um, so you, I'll go through this process for sort of more styling sensitive areas of the design two, three, four times, however many times it takes to find something that I'm satisfied that meets the brief, that looks striking, you know, that gives the front end of this sports car something unique and distinctive about it. I don't want it to look completely generic. I want to have its its own character. So it's a case of, yeah, really sort of making these variants, understanding whether it's going in the right direction, whether it's the final direction or whether it's just pointing towards something else. But there's something about that character with the light sort of, being angled and then coming up higher that, that I like. There's something there that's that's worth exploring. So we'll, we'll finish off this phase of the sketch model, uh, get this variant built so that we can reflect on it. And sometimes I'll, I'll do that after hours. I'll be staring at the CAD, looking through the options and, and then just sleep on it, sit and see what, see what ideas come to me overnight. Because uh, design's certainly never done uh, in one, one day on the who. So it's a case of sort of working through things, trying ideas out and then giving yourself a chance to just reflect and pause and take those on board and see if, if they're doing the right things for you overall. 
So this, this variant now I've, I've nearly built, it's, I'm just trimming back the curves on the surface to make it all come together. We can start to see the character now as, as we'd originally sketched it and get a feel for how that's looking. And again, we're just using tubular offset to um, subdivide the surface to create uniform offset edges of what will be the daytime running light shape. Uh, just projecting those on, extending those through, trimming things back, uh, getting to the point where we've got a clean shape that we can uh, eventually trim back, assign a different colour to it, perhaps with a bit of glow on there so we can start to see the character of that a bit more in alias. And just go, yeah, we, we've got the character of this now. This is starting to give us more of what we want in our design. So now we've got the front end something like, yeah, it's time to devote a bit more attention to the rear to bring it up to the same level. Um, so we're looking at these um, aerofoil end plates, uh, getting a bit more shape in them. We're looking at the wing surfaces themselves, adding a bit of fullness to it, giving it more of an aerofoil section by sliding those CVs around to give us more of a sort of a teardrop shape aerofoil character. Um, assign a bit of colour to differentiate the top wing from the lower one. Uh, coming back to the end plates, yeah, they're pretty technical, they're very basic surfaces, but it's, let's add a little bit of fillet to just soften it a little bit, give it a little bit more character. Uh, just gets to the point where, yeah, it's all looking kind of sensible and joined up in terms of the design intent. Then the next job for me was to use the uh, tubular offset tool to create a couple of sort of real light bars. Uh, so there's a series of strips with just a sphere placed at the end to round it off. I'm not trying to make beautiful transitional surfaces, I'm just trying to do enough as a sketch model to convey the character of it. So that all seems to be working and then it's a case of subdividing that lower surface so that the black region inside contained within the end plates is a different colour from the silver outside bits. And then creating very basic sort of triangular surfaces and duplicating those to communicate like a rear diffuser if you like. So you've got a series of splitters that are sort of combing the air as it comes up out the rear of the vehicle um, just to give it a bit more character. Using basic revolve to hint at an exhaust and get a surface up and running on that revolved around the y-axis. Uh, du using duplicate to create um, a full 360 revolve on that. I tend to revolve in 90 degree chunks on time so I've always can track where that centre axis is. Uh, and then you can yeah, relate it to the splitter, maybe there's four in there, maybe that's a bit excessive. We just come back to two. Uh, play games with the position of it just to get it kind of something light but yeah looking around the model from front to back it's all kind of doing what we want it to. Um, I maybe want to put a few little uh, extra rib surfaces in uh, outside of those sort of end plates so again using tubular offsets um, to literally just project the curves on surface put the tubes in place um, get some surfaces up and running that kind of do what I want them to do in terms of the spacing. Uh, and then just extend those surfaces through so that they meet and sort of pass through the bodywork. I'm not worried about trimming things back too much at this stage. I'm just after doing the basics, getting to the point where we've got something that we're happy with the overall look of. Okay, well that concludes episode two. Um, I hope you found that interesting and informative. Um, join me again whenever you're ready for episode three where we'll, uh, yeah, pull this model together and uh, make some renders. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.